Eric Darling here with Darling Data. In uh, today's video, we're going to learn a little bit more about T-SQL here. And uh, in this video, we're, we're going to talk about subqueries. Now, of course, this is preview of the beginner material uh, that I'm putting out. Uh, this is for pre-sale down in the old video description somewhere about in this area, this vicinity, somewhere over in here. Uh, you can purchase everything now uh, for half the price that it will be uh, when the material is fully published. This is, of course, companion material, not like full material, but companion material uh, to the pre-cons that Kendra Little and I will be uh, teaching at Past Data Community Summit this November. And uh, if you're coming to those, you will get all of this stuff for free because um, they, 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 will, they will mesh fairly well. Anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, like the particular form of subquery with not in. Now, it's at least fairly well known amongst SQL people that when you use not in and one side is or both sides are nullable, um, things get kind of weird and you need to think a little bit harder about how you write your queries. So I, I promise this isn't like just the, that isn't the lesson I'm going to teach you. We're going to go further than that. But that's sort of the starting point, all right? So like if we say, if we run this query, and uh, so what we're looking at here is uh, a query where both sides of the, uh, the, the not in expression are nullable. So in the votes table, wake up, zoom it. Come on, buddy, you can do it. In the votes table, the user ID column is not only nullable, but contains lots of nulls because this table is heavily scrubbed in the public data dump because like it would be unfair to publish people's like voting records out in the out in the wild right you vote and it's supposed to be a private thing right how you vote is supposed to be between you and the 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 piece of paper you jam a hole in you don't want any hanging chads in, in the stack overflow community uh and then uh like in the comments table, some of the user IDs are also are null. Not, this column is again nullable and contains nulls, right? So there are nulls on both sides of this not in expression. <clears throat> when, of course, it's only uh, if there are nulls on the uh, the inner side of the not in expression that we get the sort of incorrect resulty stuff from it, right? So if we run this, this is going to run for about four seconds, and it's going to return a count of zero. So it's going to look like there are no matches in these. But of course, if we look at the execution plan, we'll see that, I mean, we're not going to see that there were matches. What we're going to see is why SQL came to the conclusion that there were no matches, right? So uh, we have uh, what, it, so up in the very, very top here, this would be the actual join between uh, votes and comments, right? This set, like this here, this is the uh, comments table. This is the votes table. And this is where they would get joined together to uh, produce a result from that subquery. But you can see about right here is where SQL decides that there are no matches whatsoever, right? That's where we, that's where we first hit a zero. So <clears throat> let's examine the query plan a little bit. Um, what we have down in this section uh, where SQL Server decides that we have zero rows is uh, a, right, we have the votes table, which gets left anti-semi-joined to, a, to the comments table here. And there's a row count lazy spool here that counts a whole bunch of rows. And then there's another left anti-semi-join, which we just talked about, which is where we hit zero. Uh, and then down here, there's another copy of the comments table and another row count spool. So a, a, a row count spool just does exactly kind of what the name implies. It counts rows. This iteration of the, or rather this reference to the comments table uh, is just counting all of the rows in the comments table. It counts all like 24.5 million rows or something. Um, and then this one down here is counting something a little bit different. <clears throat> this one is looking for nulls, right? Because this column is nullable, but may not contain nulls, Right? Just because a, a column allows nulls does not mean anyone has put a null in there. SQL Server needs to do this to figure out if there is a null. And then if there is a null, right? Like th this is where the semi-joins get kind of funny. So like here we're just counting rows, right? And we're joining that count of rows 
to the votes table here, right? This left anti-semi join, which means like like not not exists, not in. Uh, in this one, but the the predicate on this one is just where you v the votes uh, the user ID column in the votes table is null, right? So v dot user ID is null. So it's like okay, are there nulls here? I don't know. And then this one doesn't actually have a predicate on it. What are we left anti-semi joining to? Well, we're just figuring out if there are nulls in this table. And if there are nulls, then this returns no rows, right? This is where we go from three, five, eight, two, seven, one to zero. So what we can do to get a somewhat correct result, somewhat, is uh, do this, right? We can say, uh, select uh, count from votes where the user ID column is not in uh, this again, but this time we're going to get rid of nulls from the comments table. Okay, now I, I want you to pay attention to what this number turns out to be. Do, 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 do. This does not really get all that much faster. It's maybe like about a second faster. The last query took about four seconds. This one takes about three and change. But the result that we get back is 293716. <clears throat> I just want you to keep that number in mind because it, it is a number, but is it the right number? We're gonna fit we're gonna we're gonna figure that out and we're gonna ask a probing question about data to, to help you write your queries correctly, right? So if we look at the execution plan for this one, <clears throat> we are down to one row count spool right here. We don't have the two row count spools anymore. And this one is just looking, this one is just counting where c.userid is not null. And then uh, we have our left, left, an, left anti-semi join here to where v.userid is null. And then we have our actual join up between uh, votes and comments here on user ID. So we get 293716 back from this. Is that number right or is that number wrong? Well, one way to sort of visualize what that thing is actually counting is to write the query like this. Oh, and I have all these ridiculous things popping up on my screen now. So if we add in this predicate, we will get rid of both row, we will get, we will have no row count spools in the, in the query execution plan anymore, because SQL Server will no longer have to track this. And we're gonna get the same number back but this is where I want you to ask yourself if this is the right number or not. Because SQL Server can only count where user ID is not a null mark, which is what it gave us in the previous query. And it's exactly what we get in this query too. Right? If we run this, it still takes about three seconds. We still get 293716. If we look at the execution plan, there are no more row count spools. There is just one join here, and the number of rows that leave that join is 293716, and that's what we count here with the stream aggregate. Is this right or wrong? Well, one way to, one way to find out if, if you think this is right or wrong is to write the query a little bit differently. Now, this does help us move into the next topic that we're going to talk about, which is going to be exists and not exists. But what happens if we run this query? Because see, like, like whenever people talk about uh, not in and how it can return incorrect results if there are nulls on the inner side of the not in, is they, they will tell you to either screen out nulls from the, uh, the query itself, right? That's one way to protect yourself from getting incorrect results, right? Incorrect results. Or they'll tell you to use not exists. But not exists will fundamentally give you a different result here. Okay, so let's look at if we run this query, this is going to run a lot faster, right? This finishes in about a second, but look at the number we get back, All right? Four, nine, six, three, nine, six, five, five. That is an eight digit number of rows that we get back from this count, which is much higher than the 293,716, I believe, that we got back from the other query. So this is counting all of the rows in the votes table where the values don't exist in the comments table for user ID, right? And that includes the nulls. Remember, like not exist and exist and not exist handle nulls in ways that, uh, or rather not, not exist handles nulls in a much better way than not in handles them. So we still do that join, but we're counting all of the rows and votes that are still null, 
right? Because those don't match. So depending on what you want to actually count, you might need to write this query differently in either case. If you want a count of all the rows, including nulls, in the votes table that don't, where the user ID there doesn't exist in the user ID column in the comments table, then just write not exists. But what happens if we change that not exists query to also get rid of nulls from the outer side, right? So we'll no longer count null, null rows from votes. What do we come back to? 293716. So you can kind of get a sense here that the data, like what, what query results are correct depends on what you're actually looking for. If you're purely looking for matches between votes and comments, then you'd then like you would want to screen out nulls from the votes table. If you want to count all the rows, including nulls, from the votes table that don't match the user ID in the comments table, then you could just write not exists and leave it at that. So it really does it really does depend on what you're looking for here, how you want to write this query to get back the correct results. Anyway. That's about what I wanted to talk about here. Thank you for watching this. Again, this is just a small portion of the material. You can see we're down in like the 300 rows here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't cover because it's a preview. It's supposed to urge you to buy the video course so you see all the content. Cool. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you will now have something very interesting to think about when you, uh, when you are writing your, your queries. And uh, what else? I don't know. I think that's about it. Anyway, uh, it is it is Saturday here, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do something else now with my with my entire day. So, thank you and goodbye.